Hi everyone, my name is Ginny and I'm going to be the tour guide today. I am a senior human development and family studies major from Auburn, New Hampshire, and I am in the College of Health and Human Services, which I'm going to be showing you today. Um, we're going to have three specific stops on this tour, which are three of our academic buildings within our college division. The first will be Hewitt Hall, the second is Petty Hall, and then we'll finish our tour at New Hampshire Hall. For those of you who might be joining this tour from the College of Health and Human Services interested in nursing, we won't specifically be covering nursing today because we have another nursing specific tour that has been filmed and posted onto our channel. So if you're interested in nursing, please navigate to that video, but this one specifically is going to be about the rest of our College of Health and Human Services. So our first stop on this tour today is going to be Hewitt Hall. In Hewitt Hall are four of our CHHS majors, which are occupational therapy, health management and policy, recreation management and policy, and communication sciences and disorders. Again, nursing is also held in this building, but we will talk about that on the nursing specific tour. So I'm gonna walk us now into Hewitt Hall. No matter what department your major fall unders, there are tons of student clubs and organizations for students who are in the College of Health and Human Services. For students who major might fall under communication sciences and disorders, the American Sign Language Club is a great place for students to learn how to speak with sign language and interact with the local deaf community. For those students who are in the kinesiology department, the Student Athletic Training Organization is a great organization that helps current athletic training students with the opportunities for community service, socialization, and intellectual development outside the scope of our formal class, laboratory, and clinical settings. So now we're inside Hewitt Hall, and I'm going to be taking us to a conference room that is also often used as a smaller discussion-based classroom. So this is one of our conference rooms and classrooms here in Hewitt Hall. And um, as you can see, we have these tables for a more discussion-based type of class, meetings between advisors and students, um, or some sort of professional or academic support that you might be looking for through our dean's office, which is also located in this building. So if you need to speak with the dean, go to any of our career services, um, receive that academic support, Hewitt Hall is going to, the pla going to be the place where you go um, if you're in the College of Health and Human Services. One of my favorite things to know about the college is something called our um, ACE program. And really the point of that is to help students transition from high school into college within the Health and Human Services. So every student who enters CHHS is going to have an academic advisor who they work with. So my advisor, my freshman year, was somebody that I met with each semester to pick my classes, um, talk about different opportunities for internships and career, and really built a strong relationship with to the point where she was able to be some of my references for jobs as a senior leaving college this year. Another special thing about the ACE program is 
what we have for undeclared students. I promise you it's okay to not know what you want to do when you get to college, but if you have a general interest in health and human services, then CHHS at UNH is the right place for you, and we're going to help you navigate that. So the ACE program is when students are paired up with another specific advisor and a peer mentor, and you'll go through a transitional seminar that's worth one credit your first semester here at UNH to learn about the different majors within our college division. And then your second semester will have another one credit seminar that involves talking about different career paths that can stem from any one of our majors. So if you're planning on coming in undeclared, you're not gonna be left hanging. Um, the ACE program is gonna walk you through different opportunities that you have here. You'll take some of our introductory coursework like intro to psychology or intro to anatomy and physiology, which are often prerequisites for any of our majors in CHHS. And you'll have those opportunities to really explore before you set off into one of our specific major paths. So speaking of support in the Health and Human Services College, I'm going to walk us over to some of our faculty offices that we can see. Each faculty member in um, our majors have their own office within their department in Hewitt Hall. So specifically, we'll be walking over to the one for health management and policy. But regardless of your major, um, within that academics, academic department's hall is going to be a hallway with the offices of your professors. And if we look down this hallway this way, um, obviously not too much to see here, but these are an example of those offices where professors um, will be throughout the day, and it's also where they'll hold something called office hours. Um, so office hours for a professor are a time that they designate during the week for students to come and visit them, whether that's to ask for support on an assignment or homework, um, to ask more questions about content that was covered in class. Um, sometimes students will even just go and talk to professors about research or something that's a common interest. So um, professors, especially in CHHS, are super accessible and are right here, um, just steps away from the classrooms where you may have just had class with them. In addition to something like office hours maybe being worked into your schedule, you're also going to have a fairly regular class schedule each week. Um, the College of Health and Human Services tends to have a little bit more um, of a schedule that follows the same pattern each week um, because our classes really need to be meeting and covering that content on a regular basis. So typically students will have four courses per semester that meet twice a week each for about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so you're looking at most of your classes occurring um, during the day and following that twice a week pattern. For someone like me who's in human development and family studies, my classes actually tend to follow more of a once a week schedule and they are three hour lectures. So I get that time with my professor and my classmates for an extended period one time per week so that we can have longer discussions without them being interrupted and separated into two different days. However, for other classes in um, the College of Health and Human Services, whether you're doing lab work um, in the occupational therapy lab or something in communication sciences and disorders, um, those sessions can be broken up throughout the week. Before we leave Hewitt Hall, I'm going to bring us down to the second floor to check out where our dean's office and our career and professional success workers meet with students. Here on the second floor of Hewitt, we have our dean's office as well as our career and professional success offices. 
in career and professional success, you have access to professionals who are going to be guiding you and advising you in things like resume writing, um, interview practice. They even have clothes to borrow for an interview if you need something business casual. Um, they'll help you do job searching, internship searching, really figuring out what your skills are and where you might fit best in the workforce. Um, that's really what CAPS is for. CAPS is something that is offered to the whole university, but what's unique and really great about UNH is that we have college specific CAPS offices. So in the College of Health and Human Services, we have people who know everything really there is to know about the fields um, within our majors. And so for someone like myself, being in human development and family studies, there are a lot of options for careers down the road um, with that skill set. And so over my four years here, I've gone to the CAPS in Hewitt to um, write my resume originally my freshman year. Um, I've come back my senior year to really touch it up as I'm applying for careers outside of the university. Um, they've also helped me to look through different skill sets that I have and opportunities I've had that would best um, impress employers in the future. So um, that's just another great resource that we have here in Hewitt Hall. Now I'm going to walk us over to our next stop, which is Petty Hall, another one of our College of Health and Human Services buildings. And that hall is home to our majors, which are social work and human development and family studies, which is my major. Behind me here, you can see that there is some construction going on outside of Hewitt Hall. Um, this is intended to be going for a little while now um, in order to better our campus and, and make some changes. So um, that's kind of why we're not walking to Petty this way, which you can see down back there. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of a loop around here to get to that building today. So let's head over to Petty now. For students who are coming in the social work department, the Phi Alpha Honor Society provides a closer bond among students in the social work program, and they also promote humanitarian goals and ideals. These are not the only clubs in CHHS. There are many more, and with each of these clubs, a main theme is student involvement and networking with not only your peers, but professor and alumni. So now we are in Petty Hall. Um, again, this is the home to social work and human development and family studies. But before we talk about that, I do want to mention a really cool feature that we have on our campus right next door to Petty Hall, um, and that's the cogeneration power plant. Sustainability is a huge part of our campus and student experience at UNH. And what that cogeneration plant does is it brings in methane gas from a local landfill and converts it into renewable energy that powers 100% of our academic core that we're walking through with you today and 85% of the whole UNH Durham campus. Um, and some of the residual heat from the work that's done in the cogen also is used to heat buildings and residence halls on our campus. So if you have an interest in sustainability, that's definitely something else to check out at UNH. Now though, we're gonna be going into a traditional classroom and Patty Hall, so you can follow me this way.
So this here is one of our traditional classrooms in Patty Hall. You can see that students are usually seated at desks here in a smaller type of classroom um, with the professor and some really great technology up front. Um, while we're in this classroom, I just want to tell you a little bit about what it's been like for me to take classes at UNH. Um, those first couple of years, you'll see some lecture halls that are a little bit bigger when you're taking your introductory coursework. So for me, my human development class and intimate relationships and families were larger lectures. Um, had to put the effort in to introduce myself to my professors and get to know them. But by the end of the semester, I had such a great connection with one of them that I actually got to take an advanced course the second semester of my freshman year. So those connections in those big lecture halls are really important. Um, and if you're somebody who likes to take notes and really just kind of absorb during the class, that would definitely be a style of learning that you would enjoy. Once you get a little bit further into your coursework, regardless of what major you're in in CHHS, you'll be in more classrooms like this because a lot of our content is discussion-based and hands-on. Um, so whether that's in some of the labs that I mentioned earlier in Hewitt Hall, if you're um, some of those more occupational therapy or health management, recreation therapy majors, um, or if you're in human development and social work, a lot of that is um, being in classrooms with kids, um, practicing client interactions with your peers sitting in these classrooms, sometimes we'll move all these chairs into a circle and just have a really great discussion about recent literature or different readings that we've been assigned by our professor. Um, something that I really like too is that my professors are always really great about guiding discussion, but not being the only one talking. Um, so you're gonna be encouraged often to share your ideas um, at any point in time during the class. Um, and the professor is really just going to be there to facilitate and provide their um, expertise in the field. But the classroom is really run by the students, which I love. Another thing about academic experience that I think is just great to mention um, is one of my favorite professors. Her name is Dr. Tyler Jameson, and she's in the Human Development and Family Studies Department. Um, and the reason why I've enjoyed taking her classes so much is, again, because of the way she guides those discussions and also um, just applying our learning in very specific ways. So giving us opportunities um, through the internship seminar that we have here at UNH or providing her own lived experience and her, her research in order to help us to learn and know a little bit more about what we're studying. Another opportunity within CHHS that I've been able to take advantage of as a student is internships. Um, sometimes they're coordinated through your major where you can earn credit for them. And other times you'll work with your advisor and the Career and Professional Success Office to create your own opportunities. So something I've gotten to do that's actually connected to UNH is um, interning with Waypoint New Hampshire. And um, we have this really great place called the Institute on Disability, which does research um, looking forward and um, really creating new ways um, to work with different people around our state. Um, and so with them, I got to be trained on the New Hampshire wraparound care model. Um, and so even though I'm not doing this internship for credit through UNH, the place that I was working for sent me to trainings at UNH, which was just a really cool coincidence because I'm a student here too. Next, I'm going to take us to a study space on the first floor of Petty Hall.
Here we are now in a study space in Patty Hall. So something that's really great about UNH is that you can study pretty much anywhere. Um, sometimes students only have 15, 20 minutes between their courses. And so if both of them are in Patty, instead of having to walk over to the library or go back to your residence hall, we have spaces like this where you can go um, hang out with friends, get some work done, um, take a little bit of a break before your next class. So I really like to show off spaces like this. For the next part of our tour, we're going to be visiting with um, Mike Ferguson, who is a professor in our Recreation Management and Policy Department. Yeah, sure. So my name is Dr. Michael Ferguson, and I am an assistant professor in Recreation Management and Policy here at UNH. And so my background, I come from a background of natural resource management as well as human dimensions of natural resource management, coming formally from West Virginia University and Penn State University, and now here, I've been here for five years. I love interacting with all the students from across the board, from all different types of backgrounds and cultures. Um, so we're in the Department of Recreation Management and Policy, and we are fortunate to have three separate undergraduate options. So we have an option in outdoor leadership and management, which is where I teach in. We have an option in program and event management. Um, and then we have an option in therapeutic recreation as well. Um, and across all three of these options, it really allows us to interact with a diverse group of students. And we're in a really unique major in that everything we're doing and teaching is very, very applied. So we don't dive into the heavy theoretical, but rather we're preparing future recreation professionals um, for the field. And these folks can be going out and working in fields such as tourism, um, public recreation, so things like parks and protected areas or national parks or U.S. Forest Service, things like that, as well as corporate events, private events, um, and all the things of this nature. So it's a very hands-on major, a lot of experiential in-the-field learning, um, and I think that's what I like the most about teaching is that there's a nice mixture of classroom time as well as in the field, working with managers, hands-on, so that when you come out with this degree, you're ready to hit the ground running. Yeah, so um, in the Department of Recreation Management and Policy, I teach classes, so I teach large and small classes. So for instance, one of the large classes I teach is a historical perspectives class, a uh, discovery course called the History of Outdoor Pursuits in North America. It's a wonderful, tremendous class, um, open to all students across the university, getting diving into the immense history and cultural identity of recreation um, as an American pastime. Um, I teach classes in higher level classes in recreation resource management. So that's dealing with hands on social science of how we manage visitation and increasing visitor use within our parks and protected areas. We've seen the dramatic increase in visitation with COVID um, to recreation resources. And then I also teach um, courses across the core for our program and event management, things like marketing. Um, as well as organizational behavior and things in that realm. You know, we help them all in different ways. So I'm an advisor to a multitude of students, and um, we help students in all different ways. You know, as freshman students, they are coming in and they are starting to kind of get their sea legs under them, if you will, into a new world. And so I really just try to help those types of students with organizational behavior and coming into a collegiate setting from high school can be a big dramatic cultural shift study habits, kind of getting in, block scheduling, how to treat this like a job, that type of thing. As we develop and as students progress, and if they're struggling in the upper levels, junior, senior, we really start to help them with not so much the fundamental skill sets, but developing those real world applied technical skills, such as interviewing, um, project management, human resource management, internships, things that will serve to help them in the classroom as well as skill sets that are desirable for employers in the future. Broadly speaking, my research um, assesses outdoor recreation behaviors in what we call parks and protected area settings. Parks and protected areas is a broad term we use to encompass all national parks, national forests, state and local parks. Um, specifically, my research looks at modeling visitor behaviors, decision making and experiences in parks and protected areas. So now more than ever, we are seeing an influx of visitation to our parks and protected areas around the nation. And there is a real need to manage this experience and to manage the visitors and the visitor use habits 
that are happening. So we're seeing more and more, for instance, reservation systems becoming common across the United States, um, largely due to COVID and the increased visitation that we're seeing. And we're seeing these inflated instances of crowding, conflict, ecological damage, things of this nature. And so what we're trying to do is we're working with managers to give them empirical data and evidence so that they can implement policy such as reservation systems or capacities or alternative transportation systems, all in an effort to provide the highest quality outdoor recreation experiences on our public lands. So we do a lot of student involvement in research, undergraduate student involvement as well as graduate student involvement. But from the undergraduate side of things, um, because we are social scientists and because we are collecting data, our bread and butter is collecting on-site, face-to-face survey data with visitors as they're exiting parks or protected areas. And um, so we get a lot of undergraduate involvement. I run an ARC lab here. Um, a, it's called the Applied Recreation Research Collaborative, and I have numerous undergraduate students in that lab going out and collecting data during the summer months um, in beautiful places, such as the White Mountain National Forest, the Green Mountain National Forest, Acadia National Park, and others. Um, these folks have a wonderful summer. They get to, um, you know, a lot of times, double dip this experience with their internship, and they're collecting data, they're working with managers, and they are implementing policy on the ground. The best advice for incoming students is first and foremost to come visit us in Hewitt Hall in Recreation Management and Policy. Um, I kid, but seriously, as Noah and I, who was filming this, were just talking, um, we get a lot of students that transfer into our major about their junior or senior year. And we joke that we're gonna get it branded on a mug that um, the phrase, I didn't know this was an actual major and I wish I had learned about it earlier. So my advice for students would be to come, put the feelers out, check out the department, check out the area, see what we have to offer and see what the university has to offer. There are so many opportunities here to get involved um, with everything. And so that would be my biggest piece of advice, is just don't become siloed, don't fixate on just one um, specific major, even if that's what you're, if you're declared and coming in as a freshman, that's great, but keep the feelers out for other opportunities. You don't know what you don't know. So our next stop is going to be New Hampshire Hall, which is home to programs such as exercise science, health sciences, sports management and leadership, and health education and physical education. So now we're gonna head downstairs and we're gonna go check out one of our larger lecture hall classrooms. As I mentioned, this is one of the larger classrooms in New Hampshire Hall and across the College of Health and Human Services in general. Um, so this is a classroom where you'd be having more of that lecture style class, um, listening to your professor, taking your notes. Um, and I just think this is a, a really great classroom to show the environment of learning that we have for that style of class. While we're here, I do want to talk about some opportunities for study abroad and study away that students have at UNH. Um, most generally, Students are allowed to study abroad here and they have opportunities to create their own experience. If you have a country you've really been wanting to go to and you'd like to study there and experience that culture, um, you can meet with a study abroad advisor to make that experience happen for you. Um, or we have some things in place domestically too here in the United States like um, study away programs where you can go to a different university in a different state for a semester, or um, we have a really cool opportunity in Boston, Massachusetts called Semester in the City um, that's with our social innovation programs at UNH. So you get to do um, 
a social innovation internship while you're there and take some coursework around um, that field of study. Specifically to CHHS, though, we also have some programs that come um, right out of our college division for students to take advantage of. Um, a couple examples of those is we have a semester abroad program with the Alliance for um, Global Education's Public Health, um, and you have opportunities there to go to Wales, England, and Belize. Um, and we also have some summer and J-term programs that are offered. One specifically, if you're looking into being a social work student, is the comparative social welfare system um, where you get to go to Ireland and meet with social workers and social work students who are studying there. Um, so lots of opportunity to explore outside of UNH, um, even you know, if you know your heart is here in New Hampshire, um, you do have those opportunities to find um, new places to explore. With that, we are going to conclude our tour for today. Um, so thank you for joining us here on our channel, um, and I hope you enjoyed learning more about the College of Health and Human Services here at UNH. Um, again, my name's Jenny, and um, I'm a Human Development and Family Studies major, and my experience here at UNH has been something that um, I wouldn't change for anything, especially because of the support that I've had in my college division. Um, so, you know, whether you're looking at UNH or other colleges along the way. Um, I hope that you take advantage of that experience of higher education and get to find um, that really great support and academic opportunity that I've had here at UNH. Um, before you go today, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel as we are going to be hosting another um, general campus tour coming up next week.